Welcome to another video for National Rehabilitation Awareness Week. It is our Meet the Team series. We're getting to know patients, all, we're getting to know staff members all over the Mary Free Bed system. Uh, we're here in Grand Rapids at our uh, Grand Rapids campus, and we are talking with Matt Parrish, a recreational therapist, uh, one of our rec team here. And the fun part is we are actually in <laughs> the rec therapy area where we're filming. So we're kind of right in the center of where all kinds of stuff takes place. So Matt, if you can introduce yourself, tell me what you do here and kind of paint the picture of where we are in the hospital. Yeah. Um, my name is Matt Parrish. I'm a recreational therapist here at Mary Freebed. Um, we're in the rec room right now. You can see we got the, um, the front half of our Volkswagen Jetta. Um, that's for people that want to get back into turning wrenches and working on cars. And behind us, the black box on this table here is a fishing simulator. Uh, it's just a few of the things that we have here. Um, the name of the game with rec therapy is getting folks back into doing the things that they love to do. So, um, you know, for some folks, my spiel is for some folks that's hunting and fishing. For some folks, it's sewing and knitting. Whatever it is, uh, we understand that it's important to our patients and their families that they can do those things again. And it's our job to kind of come alongside and help in that process. I had a pediatric physical therapist say at one point that um, there, the therapy was kind of hidden in the activity. And I feel like that's probably part of the way it is with rec therapy too, right? Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, you know, a lot of times we'll uh, incorporate um, some of the goals that a patient has. Uh, I mean, that a lot, I say a lot of the times, most all the time, we, we incorporate the goals that a patient has and uh, mix that with the things that they love to do. So, um, for instance, we might have someone that's working on getting back into, um, uh, or someone that's working on their fine motor skills and they really enjoy fishing um, or uh, tying flies for fly fishing. And uh, that activity is great for fine, for working on fine motor skills and having fine motor skills is, uh, is almost a, a requirement to, to tie flies effectively. Um, so that's, that's a, that's a way that, like you said, um, the, the therapy can be kind of hidden because the person's losing themselves into, in the activity of tying flies. Um, and they're not thinking about, I need to be using my fine motor skills in this way. They're just thinking, hold the feather on the hook and put the line around the feather so that it stays right there. Like I've always done this for the last 20 years tying flies. So sometimes it can just click in that way. Whereas if we were trying to have them do something um, completely new and something that they've never done before, they, they're really focusing on just completing that um, that movement with their fingers. Whereas, you know, you use something that's a little more, um, natural to them and something that they have, um, uh, a long history of doing. Um, they don't necessarily realize that they're working on fine motor skills. They, they think they're just tying a fly again. That so I've been asking everybody that we've been doing these videos as we're raising awareness about rehabilitation and educating about what it is, how would you, from your view as a rec therapist, define rehabilitation? Um, rehabilitation is getting someone back into back into life. I think um, that's kind of a the unofficial <laughs> definition. You could Google the definition, um, but I think it's uh, you know someone for some reason, whether they fell off a ladder or they got in a car accident or they are recovering from cancer treatment or whatever it is, um, you know, they've fallen off of the, the tracks and they need rehabilitation to get back on in whatever way that is. You know, some people are going to go through rehab and come out on the other side as if nothing happened. Um, you know, they might be up and walking around and no one would know that they ever required to have rehab. Um, for other folks, it's not that way. They come out of rehab and they're as independent as they can possibly be, but life looks a little different. Um, rehab, I think, is is just the process of um, through therapy and through um, through training with them and their family of getting them to the point of 
in, as independent as they possibly can be. How you guys are a piece of the puzzle, the big piece of rehabilitation, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech language pathology, psychology, physician, and, and rec therapy, and, and nutrition. If there's all these different components. How do you fit into this piece of the puzzle? Um, you know, are there any times that you're actually like co-treating or working with the other therapists and other clinicians? Yeah, we definitely do co-treat um, on occasion. Um, rarely do I go into a patient's room and tell them, hey, I'm a rec therapist. And they say, oh, yeah, I know what rec therapy is. Uh, nine times out of 10, they're like, what is what is recreational therapy? And a lot of times um, my answer, you know, you just listed a bunch of the different disciplines that we have here and that most rehab hospitals have. Um, and how I explain it to a patient is that, you know, rehabilitation and their journey, uh, you know, I like to envision it as a, as a highway and as many disciplines are, as there are here, there's that many lanes on the highway. We're all driving in the same direction. We're all driving towards, um, we're all driving towards independence. That's, that's our big goal. PT's got the, the specific goals that they're working on for independence, um, OT, speech, nursing, everybody, everybody's wanting this patient to be independent. The patient of course is on this, on this journey, this highway as well. In the rec therapy lane, we're focusing on those leisure pursuits. So, um, whether it's gardening or video games or shooting pool or fishing or knitting a blanket, whatever it is, you know, like I said earlier, it's, it's our, our passion is getting them back into their passions and their hobbies and uh, the activities that they love to do. Um, back to the coach reading thing. You mentioned coach reading. Um, we do like to coach treat and a good example to go back to the fine motor skills and the fly tying, um, the fly tying example, that's something that OT would definitely, um, jump on. If, if, if with that patient, we were, uh, you know, say OT and rec accidentally got scheduled together that day and I was going to be working on fly tying. I think that, um, I, I don't want to speak for all occupational therapists, but I think that that's an, that's an example of an activity that the occupational therapist is going, is going to say, yeah, that goes along with what we're going to be working on today is, uh, is, you know, them using their hands to complete tasks. And if it's time flies, then that works for today. Um, so that's, that's just one example of how coach reading might, uh, might come about in, um, at, at Mary Free Bed with an activity like that. So we're going to try to go a little uh, unscripted here. And I just, this room is so awesome. It's always fun when we're able to come in and do stories here. So I'm going to pick up the setup and kind of walk around. And I want you to just kind of tell me all the different things we have in here and how you guys use it in therapy. So right, I'm going to start right behind me because we've got a couple uh, adaptive adaptive video game system. So I'm going to just kind of walk around and you can just kind of tell me what, what I'm looking at. Sounds good. <laughs> Am I going with you? No, I'll just go. Okay. Sounds good. So yeah, we got some adaptive video game controllers that, uh, that you see there. The white box is, um, an adaptive Xbox controller, which you can buy um, adapters so that it so that it will also work with PlayStation. I think between PlayStation and Xbox, um, that covers most of our um, most of our video game players here at Mary Freebed. The game consoles themselves are inside of the big white box. That's a cart so that we can haul it around to patients' rooms. Uh, but that's an example of a setup that a patient might use, where you got those things that your hand would fall in. They look like goalposts. Um, those are like your toggles and then you can see the A, X, Y, B buttons there. And if a patient doesn't have the fine motor skills to, you know, move all of those things with their thumbs, they can do everything with their hands completely closed in that picture that you see right there. They can just punch each one of those buttons and move the toggles. And we got, so, we got a lot, a lot of adaptive bikes here. Um, so whether a patient is uh, going to be pedaling with their legs again, both of those bikes are, are, uh, bikes that you would pedal with your feet. 
Um, and then you steer with your hands, of course. We do have hand cycles as well. I don't think there's one that we can zoom in on. Um, in the car, like I was talking about, um, we've had patients do everything from uh, engine work on this car to checking filters to just identifying parts to putting new windshield wipers on, lifting the hood up. Um, we had a, a guy that did a lot of body body work on the car one time um, and buffed it out for us, which was kind of a fun thing to, to see happen. Then, of course, the fishing simulator. Um, we had some donors uh, um, generous enough to help us purchase that fishing simulator. So shout out to Gregory and Amy Conway. Um, that gets used all the time. Um, and then our wood shop. We got lots of projects in there that either need to be put together or uh, have already been put together and a patient can just sand on them. You can see we got a couple small engines in there as well um, for patients that are working on turning wrenches and stuff. Sometimes the car can be a little hard to get to on those early stages in, in therapy. Anything else? We got we got a pool table down yeah, yonder. <laughs> All right, yeah. I can see I can see your picture on my computer, so it's working good. Yeah, we got the basketball hoop and putting green. Um, things are pretty uh, self-explanatory, you know. We we have these awesome things in our rec, in our rec space. Um, it's our music therapy room there. There's our yeah our billiards table and beanbag toss. We have a ping pong, a set of ping pong boards that go up on top of that pool table, so we can play some ping pong. Um, Lots of lots of awesome activities that we have in here. Yep, that's our music therapy room. We have two music therapists here at Mary Freebed, and they have a student right now as well. So um, they're a pretty awesome team, and we often hear some pretty magical music sessions coming out of that room, um, whether they're on the drums or guitars or singing, all kinds of awesome, awesome stuff coming out of there. But yeah, we did, did a little little tour there that was good thank you on our social media feed for watching and digging uh surviving through that hopefully we didn't get you guys a little dizzy there so this has been a video for national rehabilitation awareness week we are talking to matt Parrish. he's a recreational therapist here at the mary free bed team he works inpatient um Matt, I just want to ask you, how did you get into rehabilitation? How did you start in healthcare? What motivated you and kind of got you started on, on this track? Yeah. Um, I, I was in college for two and a half years before I even knew what recreational therapy was. Um, I, the track that I was in, I was feeling a little stale to me. Um, and I didn't know which way to go. And, uh, at around that same time, my sister graduated um, with her bachelor's degree in social work. She now has her master's, which is awesome. Um, but she was telling she, you know, she was going off into the into the field and helping people and sharing stories about all the cool things that she was doing and how she was touching people's lives and the hard stories and the happy stories and all of that stuff. Um, and that kind of put a spark in me of like, you know. I think I want to work with people too. And so she kind of inspired me to, um, to go that route. And so I went back to college and talked to my advisor and said, I, I have an interest in, uh, helping people. I don't, but I don't know which, which direction to go. And I've spent a lot of, a lot of time in college right now and have some, uh, have a lot of credits where, 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 where do I go? And she said, have you heard of recreational therapy? And I said, like most people do, no, I, I don't know what rec therapy is. And so she said, well, why don't you look that up and check out a couple schools downstate? I was up in, up at Lake state in Sault Ste. Marie at the time. Um, and so I checked out rec therapy and quickly realized that it was something that I wanted to pursue. Um, you know, being able to help people get back into their leisure interests, I, I don't know how that doesn't sound like an enjoyable job. Um, and I, I knew that I, whatever I did, you know, I wanted to enjoy it. That was something that my parents stressed um, throughout all of my childhood and college, like go, go do the work right now so that you can enjoy what it is that you're doing uh, for the, for a lot of your life. We spend so much time um, of our lives working. It would be miserable to be in a job that you don't enjoy. Um, but 
so I, I ended up transferring, uh, transferring to Grand Valley and getting my bachelor's in recreational therapy. Um, while I was there, I was encouraged by this, by the staff at, uh, Grand Valley to volunteer and job shadow. And so I did do some job. I did a lot of job shadowing at a lot of different facilities. Um, and I started volunteering actually here at Mary Freebed and, uh, got to know some of the staff and, um, well, pretty much all of the recreational therapy staff at the time, I was able to, to at least meet them once or twice and work around, work around their, uh, processes and programs. I was volunteering on the PEDS unit at that time. So, um, and then uh, a year later, I, it came time for me to do my internship and I, um, was able to get my internship here at Mary Freebed, um, working on the spinal cord unit and, um, got hired right out of that and made, made a silly move about a year later that I don't regret, uh, cause I, I, I learned a lot from it, but I, um, received a phone call from a different organization asking if I wanted to be a rec therapist, um, with their programs. And I was, a uh, fresh out of college still. And, uh, I think that that phone call hit my ego and I was like, I got to go be a rec therapist for this program. And, uh, quickly realized that, um, you know, although there were a lot of good days at that organization, that it wasn't Mary Freebed and it wasn't, it wasn't the place that I wanted to work long-term. And so, uh, I decided that I would wait until an opportunity came back up at Mary Freebed and, uh, within just just shy of two years at that other spot, I um, I heard that there was an opportunity back at Mary Freebed, and I pursued it as hard as I could. Uh, and I was like, I I need to I need to get back to to that spot. And um, and I was I was blessed enough to be able to come back and be an outpatient rec therapist um, for about a year and then a spot opened back up on the inpatient team and I'm back where I started, which is a, a dream come true pretty much. Um, so I, I love what I do. I love coming to work every day. I've had jobs before where it's Sunday afternoon and all you can think about is how, how much you don't want to go to work the next day. Uh, and that's, that's a nightmare. That's, that's not something that I ever want to get back to again. Um, and I don't have, I haven't had that feeling once. Uh, since I've been here, I can honestly say that, that I, you know, I'm like, Hey, tomorrow I, I'm going to go to work. Would I maybe rather be out in the woods hunting or fishing? Yeah. Maybe, but I'm not absolutely dreading coming to work. I, I love what I do. I love the people I work with, whether it's the staff or the patients that I work with. Um, and I say, you know, every other, every other Friday here, I get reminded that I get paid to do what I do. <laughs> Whereas in other jobs, every other Friday, you get reminded why you do what you do, yeah. you know, but, um, yeah, I, I love it here. Well, Matt, this has been such a fun interview, uh, getting to know you more and chatting about what you do and just about rec therapy in general. Um, this has been another national rehabilitation awareness week video, getting to meet the team here. We've been talking with Matt Parrish, a recreational therapist who works on the inpatient side here. Uh, we're just so excited to share these stories and talk about the team. If you're interested in finding out more information about Mary Freebed or how you can join our team as a student uh, or a volunteer, go to maryfreebed.com and search careers or volunteering. You can find out information there. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you check our social media feed for other videos from other team members and people around the Mary Freebed system. Thanks for watching.